Well, you think of babies well, and you're, they're given a dummy. The dummy yeah. to shut them up. Are we the dummies? So my approach this time was not to pretend to be the expert. I am the adult. I am in here. I will sort this. And all that was really happening was I made it worse. <laughs> Now, George, what are we on about? But what's the flavour of today? We've just come from triggers. And one of the triggers we were thinking of, because I looked over and I saw all these books and the, the, the word that came on it was dummies. <laughs> and I think, you know, crash dummies, whatever kind of dummies, test crash dummies, test dummies. all those kind of things. And I think one of the, what, we, what we were starting to talk about was the fact that quite often when we, if you become educated, the more, you, the more educated you are, the less smart you think you are because you realize there's so much more to understand and quite often as you as you develop and learn more and more that everything becomes so cluttered that you it almost becomes obscured and the only way to 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 get back to understanding things to clear all that obscurity away is be like the trees that have been cut down outside of our house and go back and become a dummy and start from a certain baseline and start to test things again, refresh the mind, refresh that, that things. That resonates with me. And, and again, as soon as you said the word dummy, I've been called that many a time. I'm sure I have been. I also, I'm, 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 what's coming to mind is dumb and dumber. That might be me and you, because uh, it's like, I don't know who's dumb or who's dumber, but you know, I feel dumb at the best of times when, I, when I'm entering new technologies and techno babble and babble speak and, and when we're going to go onto these platforms and I realize I, I am more dumb. I'm dumber than dumb. I know nothing about this. That's my chatterbox kicking off. I'm the dummy in the room. And that's where the need- uh, imposter syndrome comes from because you suddenly find yourself in a position where you feel out of control and you kind of feel that if someone discovers that you don't really know what you're about, you, they'll, they'll say you're an imposter and want to get rid of you. I remember some colleagues, um, fr- well, they're, col- they're, they're best friends, actually friends of mine when we were younger and we, f- we were going off to have our first jobs after college. And uh, these couple of chaps went off to live abroad and one of them was living uh, in uh, Vienna and he, star- he had to get a job of some description. So, so he tried to start teaching business English. But you know who he was teaching business English to were nearly professors of business in colleges and big companies over there in Austria. And, and he was going, mother of God, I know nothing. But all I need to know is one more chapter than this bunch. So if he would ring home and, go and ask uh, the, his uh, college professor over here in economics to give him a couple of extra bits in English that he would then translate, you know, actually no more, have good knowledgeable English content that these his students would be excited by and learning in this language and that's all he, he didn't need to understand what he was saying he just need to sound knowledgeable he just need to be one step ahead of the game and you're the expert i know that um when i started lecturing i suppose was was the was the role i i was into media and i was asked to talk about media industries and there were six different degree titles were in engineering, were suddenly being taught media industries. And when you analyze the unit that we would we were supposed to be delivering, five fifths of the course knew the particular topic that you were working on from their perspective. And there's only one group that didn't. And then it rotated around. And that was actually quite complex for 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 me because I, I they were talking about GPS. Now I have slight dyslexia and I couldn't couldn't remember GPS at that particular point in time, and they were talking about the scientific. You didn't know where you were. I didn't know where it was. was. Yeah, so I couldn't locate. You didn't myself. know what your GPS coordinates were. You didn't have your. Absolutely. You didn't have your Google Maps on. Yeah. Well, it was. It was. It was really. Um, it was really quite crazy because I. I it, that wasn't what I was there to, to try and teach, and uh, and I was being given a subject that was outside of my normal corp just because it had the word media. They were talking about communication systems. They weren't talking about media production, which is my area of expertise. But so you felt a little bit dumber. You weren't the dumbest person in the oh, room. Oh, no, no. But we certainly, it's, it's back to, you know, are we all dummies? Are we all, actually, you think of babies, well, and you're, they're given a dummy. The dummy yeah. to shut them up. Are we the dummies? Well, no, one of the things that's quite interesting uh, uh, is that one of the more recent courses that I ta- started to teach uh, 
was a subject on C sharp programming. Now, I'd done programming on in other areas before, but I never done C sharp programming. So my approach this time was not to pretend to be the expert, but actually try actually start to talk to the students and say, look, I'm in exactly the same place that you are. You've got an exam to do. I know how to get through exams. What my job is to do is to give you the information that will help you get through that. And we're going to go on a journey together. So no longer was I the expert and I didn't have to be. I was now someone there that was going to guide them along a journey to see what possibilities were. And I was learning as much from them as they were from me. Now, I was just a, a one step ahead, but at the same time... Well, the great thing about what you're saying is is everyone in the room is not dumb. No one's going to learn from anybody. Absolutely. Um, we don't want to be all floundering together. Yeah. It's, we, we, none of us know how to get to the stars. We're all dumber than each well, other. Therefore, what we may never get there. Yeah. We want a little bit of a leader or, or a little bit of someone to, to pass knowledge down yes. or, or, or train us or teach us or mentor us or coach us. So we're not the... We don't mind being the dumbest in the room at the start. Actually, we nearly want to be the dumbest in every room at the start, but we want to grow within that room based on learning from those. Or by surrounding ourselves with people more knowledgeable than ourselves will get us on the best part of growth. So we, that's the journey that I want to be on. I want to start off being the dumbest in the room, but I want to end up a little less dumb. I think, though, one of the great things is, is that the process that we were using was not to assume that I, as a lecturer, knew more than the students that were in the room. The first thing to do was to find out what the baseline was. And that baseline wasn't my knowledge. It was the knowledge of every other person that sat in the classroom. And once you began to see their perspective and where they were, you could start to deliver information that was specifically targeted to them, but also could trigger certain aspects within them to open them up and give them the conference to share what they knew to the rest of the class. Now, that's interesting. What I'm hearing is there is a certain amount of fixed something that is the subject, that's taught, that's the ABCs and the one, two, threes. These are the rules that everybody knows to get to the minimum base. Yeah. Once you know that, now we're going, you're, you're, it's, it's like we were talking about the quantum theory. If you went back 100 years, we're talking two dimensions. 20 years later, we're talking three. By 30 years after that, we're talking four. And now we're on to the fifth dimension and multiverse. But had you... Had you not built upon each one of them and let an external factor in with someone else with another idea of what else could be while building on these building blocks, we'd never end up with innovation and disruption Absolutely. and and growth because we'd be still going around going around on a choo choo train with steam coming out of it. Now maybe we'll go back there. Maybe what was the best? I'm not too sure. But we want to go to back to the future and fly. There are no roads where we're going. They're flying cars. We're well on the way to that. I don't know if they're electric or they're hydrogen, but we definitely want to be the dumbest person in the room. Learn enough, and then I think actually that's what, what it's reminding me of here is they always say in a room for projects is to have all personality types in there. You'll have the engineers with the ABCs and the one, two, threes, and then they throw in a, f a couple of left field creatives that don't know the rules and aren't actually locked in by the parameters and are able to come up with a load of well, what ifs. Yeah, one of the things that's uh, the, the biggest problem you had, especially in a classroom, is the ones that thought they were smart because they ended up being the dummies because they were confined to this, what they thought was the answer. Regurgitation. Yeah. All they were doing was Regurgitating throwing back things. what they read. It's, and then an awful lot of kids out there that go through the normal school systems is when you get through secondary school and you've learned your one, two, threes and ABCs, the next set of questions that come in college is, in your opinion. Yeah. And the in your opinion ones... I, never, I had the biggest problem in my, my Leaving Cert or a, I think it was A-levels equivalent. I was top of the class in business studies for a couple of years up to the final exam and the wording changed. Yeah. Because before that, it was named the 10 points of this and the four well, rules. That, that was something that was quite interesting. Because and then they went, in your yeah, opinion. In your and opinion. I didn't realise all I had to do was take... In my opinion, one, two, three is as good as ABC. Yeah. I had no opinion. Yeah. Well, one of, one, one of the problems that you often had was that if you got a student coming from a school, in the very first year of, of what we would call FE, further education, uh, prior to going to university, a lot of the kids were saying, George, tell me how to get a better mark. And I said, well, 
tell me what your thoughts are. And they're kind of going, no, no, no. In my other class, all we had to do to get a higher mark was do what the teacher said they wanted us to do. And I said, but that doesn't matter anymore. I want to know what you think. And they were kind of going, how do we deal with that? And then I said, what we then started to do was to, if we could monitor what they were interested in, like I discovered one, one lad was interested in cameras. And I started to observe that while he was in the classroom, he was now going online and comparing one camera to another. And I'd come up and watch what he was doing. And he turned around and kind of go, I'm sorry, George, I'm, I know I shouldn't be doing this. And I said, well, wh why shouldn't you be doing it? And he said, well, because you're obviously trying to teach me something. I said, OK, but what are you learning from this process of looking at this camera and that camera? And he said, well, look, I, I've got some of money and I know that it's a lot. And, and these are the two cameras in my price range. But I want to make sure that the features I get are the right features for me. And both these cameras look as though they've got the right features. But here's some of the positives on this, and here's some of the negatives on this one, and vice versa. So I'm just going through to try and work out which one I think would, you know, which outweighs the other. And I said, well, you're doing a critical analysis at the moment. And they went... And KPI scorecard. Yeah. This guy is now doing Do critical analysis, business analysis, competitive analysis, you know, product pricing analysis, and, and, and way out... He's no longer in the rule set of ABC. Yeah. He's applying it to the outside world. He's trying to get the best value for money, the best product and quality for money. He's also trying to get ahead of the game. He's trying to compare what's on offer, where is on offer, and, and what, what's the best for me. That's the growth mindset in action, building immediately on the minimum set of facts and figures upon which I can make decisions. And now I'm going off and comparing and growing well, the great and thing informing. Is, yeah, the great thing is that once he went through that analysis, he did see that there were downsides on each of the products. He could then actually start to do a review and in his own mind sort of give his opinion of what would actually improve both models to give him some of the extra features that they currently did, didn't have that he would like to see. And you suddenly went, well, if you could now write that, use that methodology that you've just used for looking at those two cameras within a couple of pieces of text or whether that text are two videos and this or whatever. this is what we're doing to ourselves. Yeah. We're, 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 we're going... What the hell is a podcast? Yeah. What the hell have we got to offer? Two, well, I was going to say two ball geezers. I just realized you've here. But I mean, two owl lads in, a, in, in, in rooms or the virtual room or the elephant in the room. It's more the fact there's so many podcasts out there. You would immediately go and see this guy that's out there selling millions on Netflix. And he's, he's top, captain of the planet and top of the world. And we're going, what the hell have we got to offer? Why bother? Why even start? The, and that's where the, the chatterbox box kicks back in and go but it's not about that you're not trying to pee him you're not even trying to say the same things you're not even ta trying to talk about the same subjects actually to be the best and the, it's how to be the most different is actually by being yourself it'll be so far from what that person is it'll be closer to you the real you where your comfort zone is it's not the, it's a comfort zone of not growing it's how do you be the, what is the best thing you can sell to start with? That's what we arrived at. Without too much ado, we, we realised we like talking about sex, drugs, rock and roll, the life, the universe and everything. Oh, and everything in between. It doesn't actually matter. Are we enjoying ourselves? Was that hour well spent? Would someone else be interested if we were in a pub and they were there with a pint glass? That's what you mentioned earlier. And if so, that's good enough for me because we will both shut up when we run out of things to say to each other. But most and people, that's when the natural end ends. Most people, what they're actually doing is... I remember going to college and um, I... There was a girl that I quite liked and I got talking to her and she would talk about all these different things because I wanted to just listen to what she had to say. And then I noticed that when we came into the company of somebody else, she went through the same process again. And I was going to go, all right, okay. She's actually told me exactly, told this other person exactly the same story. It's almost as though we have scripts for certain things. We do. And I'm going, I'm going to knock you on the head there. Go on. Because you, you've used, I know I've used my script. Yeah, many a and time. we do. My, my go-to yeah. story. You've used it. I've been, I've been privy to it many a time. But I also notice it's not a bad thing. It's, no. It's your, it's, it's your go-to comfort zone of, 
I'm starting here. It reminds me of a little story to tell. And this is a this is like your business card. It's you're going. This is yeah, me. Yeah. I have a grandchild. I, or in my case, I've got two like you know, young, three young children. And this is this is what's important to me at this point in time. This is what I enjoyed. I'm not bringing the stuff I hated up. I'm going. This was great. That was good. Reminds me of the other. Here's my comfort zone. Here's my favorite things in my lifetime but today. The, but the this is a little things, flavor yeah. of me. Now, but but the thing is that because we've got those scripts that we do. And I, and I wasn't actually going to uh, criticise in a negative sense. And I wasn't criticising. I'm saying positive there, yeah. by the way. I'm going, but it's... it's, we, the, each, it's we each have these things. And when we replay them to lots of different people, depending on the affirmations we get back, we can adapt. But we can also get feedback from them, which gives us recognition. Well, it worked every time before. Yeah, this, say, is we went, this is it. This is the subject of us. What it is, is this was my ABC one, two, three. Yeah. You get to get that as a hello in the pub conversation because it, it's a speed date. What it is, is you know how to, you've yeah. only got five minutes yeah. to, like, to meet this new person, better make a good impression, you know, whether it be an, a prospective employer because what you're doing is this is my CV if I'm going for yeah. a job, yeah. if I'm in a pub chatting up a bird or a bloke, it, what it is 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 this is me. I, I I'm, well, I'm but a the good interesting thing I'm a great is dancer. I sing songs. Yeah. It's a little bit of you know. It's a little bit of you. What, what what what's interesting is even though we may be using the same text a time and time again, in even in these discussions, and then we keep saying actually, and then we say that's interesting. We're using those as as connectors triggers, and triggers, triggers connectors, right yeah. to, to basically they're actually they're natural there you go we're, we're doing matter, an editing natural system they were what they are is natural pauses yeah no it's what's really happening is the brain hasn't caught up with them out in my case my mouth is flapping in the wind it's out there it's trying to pronounce the next sentence and it's actually ahead of my brain the brain hasn't given it the sentence yet so it chucks in a couple of actuallys to give it to back to get the backlog it's up the and running it's a buffering process that's going on it's a, bu uh, it's a buffering process yeah. there you go it's a it's, buffering we process. have natural bu buffering process and even the go-to stories are part of our natural buffering process we're, we're putting them out. Well, He's won us over many a time. Here's something that's great. And, and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just. What, what's interesting is that I, I met up. I, I, I had a conversation with uh, one of my nephews. Is a musician, and he was talking about the fact that when his brother used to play the guitar, every time he made a mistake, he stopped. But what he did was he carried on You're playing. You're meant to do a little ching ching. ching. You can yeah. just keep going. He kept on going. Now, one of the yeah. things that is when you when we do the actually or that's interesting, it allows us to keep on going and we can keep into a flow of things. Otherwise, you've got some very uncomfortable yeah. silences but, there. But this is then the, both of us will forget whose turn it is to talk. There's no turns here. As we said before, you got a ping pong. You got a ping pong in. Sometime, but the problem well, that, the problem is that if you suddenly start becoming aware that you're saying actually and I'm saying the interesting thing is and we stop then we've 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 actually disrupted the flow of our own thinking and it leads and it, and it becomes as you say an awkward pause that you don't really want so we have to keep the actual is and this we're is swimming. interesting in we're swimming that's it we're we're out on the atlantic ocean and we have to keep we're our breath swimming. we can do a backflip we can do a flip like we can do a little butterfly every now and again we do a little bit of a doggy paddle just keep going just keep going you haven't got to the other side yet we i think you've mentioned the other day uh, about uh, some people that set out to, to swim the river, you ha some go all in after the half. They've got, once they, it's not that they're trying to get to the halfway mark and know they can get back with the energy reserves they have. It's the fact they're going all in and now they're committed because they got to keep on. They might have gone faster and used up some of the energy, but they're, they've now got a momentum. They're going to the other side. There's no going back. And what we're really talking about is we've built up a little momentum with our little podcast. We're not going back. We're going to put them out there. We could keep on doing yeah. 20 and 30 offline, but we're, we were doggy paddling out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Now we're doing a little bit of like butterfly stroke. But the, the thing is, there's, 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 a, there's a lighthouse in the distance. Uh, we have to keep going. We have to go all in. You know, it'd be nice if we could hitch a ride off a speedboat or something. But the great thing about it is, is that what we're starting to look at, because, I mean, if we go back to this idea of dumbers, we felt that we were stupid when we were trying to start these out. But now we're building confidence because we're practicing and practicing and practicing. But what we're not doing is being overly critical of the one. We're looking and analyzing the ones we've done before. But the learning doesn't go into that one, so you keep re-editing and re-editing to make something perfect, because you'll end up spending all your life on one thing that doesn't matter 
that much. Whereas now we're generating a lot of stuff, we can implement all the feedback that we've gained and the learning we've gained from the previous ones in the ones that are coming up next. Mm -hmm. And actually, I mean, I, I wasn't feeling great in the previous session, you know, I just felt ill. But during the conversation, I had I a have, physical lift. I have lift. that effect on most people, George. Yeah. I know that. But it, but it, they but just it take one look at this yeah. ugly mug and like most of them go, I feel ill. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I can't look at that anymore. I wish he's a bit dumb. Like if, it, the word dumb, it, it's not that he's stupid. I just wish he was dumb in the sense of just shut up. But I Because think, I if think, he's yeah. dumb, he couldn't speak and I wouldn't have to listen to him. You know? Well, actually, there's there's something quite interesting because the idea of, of, of becoming dumb to listen means that you're not dumb because if you listen to what's going on, you start to absorb information and then That's you can give little it. bits of feedback <laughs> and they become quite, okay. quite interesting. So the idea of, of becoming dumb means let's let, uh, mm. if you're then quiet, you can listen to what the universe gives you and then you can reformulate that information to put out strangely, in your own new way. Strangely enough, like uh, in my, my, my previous uh, life, not my previous reincarnation, but my previous life as an, like, like an accountant, and like a consultant, and like in business intelligence of all things, it, most of my job was trying to dumb it down so they could understand what the feck I was saying because I was off there in four dimensional space and they couldn't even exist in two. And, and where they needed to be was was out there in, in, in four dimensions of how much you're making and you know by sales rep and channel one and product two and discount scheme four but what they were trying to do was go adding debit and credit money in money out the sis they couldn't even see what was going on at a two-dimensional level and i was trying to introduce quantum theory so i have my problem was how far down do i dumb it I know it should be based on the audience in the room, but the problem was the wrong audience was in the wrong room, and therefore, you know, they were asking the wrong questions of the wrong consultant because they weren't able for the answers, and they got upset that they didn't understand the answers. It didn't change the fact the facts were the facts. Well, in a way, um, I had the same problem when I first went into teaching because I was teaching media production, and my background was editing at that time. And I would be so quick to jump in and do an edit, and I'd be kind of going, blah, 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 and, and they were kind of going, we have no idea what you're doing. So what I had to do was to step back, allow the student to take my seat, and then direct them in a slow way that they could now, understand. Now, there's an interesting thing you're talking about. You see, you are in a lecturing scenario. You're in a student-teacher scenario. In business consultancy, the problem I was having was it was not my job to educate them. Yeah. It was not my job to get them to understand four-dimensional space when they're stuck in two. It was their job to do that. The thing is, their, their problems in their systems was the fact that they were trying to treat a four-dimensional space as if it was two, and that led to all their problems. So I couldn't educate them uh, there was, they weren't willing to pay for the education. Yes. They just wanted the answer. And, they wanted a solution, but the solution was they are a bit dumb and dumber and they can't expect yeah. to be Stephen Hawking. Well, that, 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 that's the problem in, in, in most video productions is that uh, people say, well, you're the expert, so why don't you just do something for us? And you, the first thing you have to say is, I have to become like the teacher in the classroom again. I need, you, I need to understand what it is that you're trying to do and then guide you to do the work. But most that you of the need time, you're asking the horse, "What does?" Yeah. In fact, we had this conversation before. Yeah. My problem was that they don't know that you're asking the wrong person the wrong Questions. question. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. finding. Go, that person's role was tied down, locked into this shape and structure of what they're required. Well, the to biggest do. problem that we had was that most people, if they were looking for a five-minute video. Uh, they just thought that that was a unit. And you kind of went, no, no, I could spend a thousand hours to produce a five minute video and it would yes. be, it would be a Hollywood style thing. And we're about to get a phone going ringing now. Um, that's the universe. That's the saying, universe. Hello. Hang on a second. Well, hello. I, I, I need a video. Dumb it down a bit. I need a video. Can you can you do this video for us, and we'll see what happens. Now, actually, behind me is uh, evolution and throwing the dice, and and what's happening here is 
the dice is, is no, we can throw a dice and we can be gambling, but the universe is throwing a dice as well in terms of throwing in some uncertainty. And the, 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 the dice has got two sides, and if you have three, if you have two of them, you know the number's going to be between, between one and 12. There's going to be a certain amount of, of knowing what the answer is. It's going to be one to 12. Now, that's if you're throwing dice. Now, I didn't know how many dice there were. What popped in, no, I don't, this has nothing to do with this conversation. And maybe it's everything to do with this conversation. Conversation. <clears throat> what what the universe threw in very odd in this household in the last couple of days was two days ago I was running around the kitchen chasing a bat. Now this morning I was running around the living room chasing a crow. The crow came down the chimney and he cleaned, he cleaned the chimney for us and you had to then try and calm him down to open the window and get him out. And, and go, this, what the hell is this? This is, like a, this is nothing I expected in a Friday you know, in, in, from the universe, like to be chasing a crow around the living room. And, and, and God forbid, if, you, if I was only able to get a YouTube video of myself going, I don't know what to do with a bat. I don't know how to catch it. I don't have the tools to do it. I was immediately thinking Wuhan. I was also thinking I had to bring the kids to get like a rabies shot. I did, like the thing goes missing in front of your eyes and you're going, where did it go? I can't find it. And now your mind has gone off into, do I stay awake all night? You know, world of problems when all I wanted was a, like a hot chocolate. So this doesn't matter. it doesn't matter what you plan out there in the universe and what you think you're going to be doing on a Monday to a Wednesday. Sometimes it chucks in a crow in a bat. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is quite fascinating that you, you've got two occasions within sh such a short and two days. period of time to actually have Now, I'd be wondering having. what's going on in this household. I'm going, are they trying to bring them in? Are they attracting them in? Is there some food there for them? Uh, is, I, I don't know what's going on because this is, we're here eight years. That never happened before. But again, what's interesting in that sort of situation is that you're suddenly being fr thrown into a situation that you have nothing to give you any parameters to work on. You, you, this is totally alien to to what you'd be expecting, which is two two flying objects coming in <laughs> and disrupting your world. And how do you actually? But there's a the learning. What am I meant? <laughs> I got no yes. training on this. Yes. I don't know. I mean, because you're the biggest, tallest adult. Well, I wasn't even in the room. I was called for it and go, I am the adult. I am in here. I will sort this. And all that was really happening was I made it worse. I was going, get out of the goddamn room. I do rabies. You're going, it's now the bat or the crow was okay. Was just, that was just going to be black soot around the room. And you could deal with that when I had three cats. So that could be sort of by chucking cats into the room. But the bat was a, was one. I, I don't know what, to do with a bat yeah. I don't know how to catch a bat I'm googling it but I mean, I mean it's weird that you're, you're meant to be the expert based on the, you're the oldest in the room you're the only adult and I was the biggest child in the room and I was the dumbest in the room immediately the kids were calmer than I were they were coming in to see they were coming in with the phones to try and capture it and make a YouTube video you know <laughs> so they were opportunists that was pretty good they're an opportunist I'm, I'm panicking you know but I think um, that well that's we live in, in a world and environment in conventions that kind of leads us everybody to think that we should know what to do within those confines. And when the world does throw a spanner in the works, because I, I mean, we've got a garden and you can see the birds and the cats and the crows and the hawks and whatever else gets thrown in the frog occasionally or a newt or a rat. They're, they're living in a different world to what we are, but we're still part of their world. In fact, their world is more chaotic because there's so much uncertainty because you don't know whether you're going to survive the next hour in case the cat gets you if you're a sparrow. But I don't think they're aware of it. No. They're, I don't think they're aware of the cat till the cat's there looking at them. You know, they're, they're, in, they're not processing these problems. They don't have their chatterboxes going, what if I go out here in the but street you look, you look at the You look at the sparrows and how quick they are moving around to look. They're, they're analysing things to see if there is dangers there. They may not understand, but we, we don't know that because it, there is the sense that they all have a language of some nature and they may be conscious of one another, uh, especially, I mean, you've seen, I've seen the crows fending off a sparrow hawk. Uh, or, or a buzzard, which is far two or three times bigger than it. But because it was threatening their eggs, it was going to dive bomb, underdo them. It would attack them any way it could. But they have a very simple life. So I think we're going back to dumb and dumber. And we're going, do we want to dumb down our lives so much we lock ourselves in a box and don't pop our heads out the door for the fact of all these uncertainties of possibilities of big, small and different can happen? Or well, no, do we step out the door I and think, learn and grow? I think that they're, they're not... 
they're not in that scared environment. They're, no, they're free. They're reacting. They're free till their yeah. dead man walk, until a cat yeah. catches the bat. The Absolutely. bat doesn't know the cat exists. They're, I mean, he's not worried about it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that they they are they are taking actions all the time. What's happening to us humans? Is they don't have to get a day job. They don't have to get a day job. They don't have to go off and pay the mortgage. And therefore, I, I'm not going to no stop comparing the bats and the cats because other than Schroeder's cat. But I mean, it's 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 what well, we're there's realizing. Batman and there's Catwoman. Well, actually, no, <laughs> Batman's good. Catwoman's good because they're in the multiverse or the DC it's just world. Just penguin, and, you know. And they're getting paid stupid millions to turn up in a lycra suit. <laughs> I know. And I mean, I like that. But I mean, and that's back to you know where did Batman come from and DC comics and who are actually I don't even know maybe it's DC or Marvel no actually they're DC you were right they're the DC comics I didn't know I knew yes but the universe did and the universe came in and told you my daughter would be proud my daughter would be proud she's probably she wants to bring me to well next time the world comes back to a new set of norm uh, comic cons the Irish comic con and it's very harmless to be a couple of people it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the American I, I think that if anything, the world, when it changes and we get out again, I think a lot more people will be wanting to do the things that they ne they were too frightened to do beforehand because they suddenly realise we've only got the now to live in. We've only got the now, this moment. We may, we may as well make the most of it. And why should we be confined by the constraints that we... They're imaginary yeah. constraints. Don't quite dumb often. it down. Don't, Don't dumb, dumb it down. It down. Yeah. D they've dumbed down the, the noise. Well, actually, let's, let's, dumb let's think the, about the, the, that. Quite often, what the issue is, is that we do need to dumb it down, and we need to dumb it down quite a bit because I know that some of the things I won't take is because I think I know what's going to happen. But if I didn't think of the problems that I was now throwing up, I could actually uh, tackle they, those actually, problems. So I need to dumb be dumbed down. down that you're a cat or a bat and you're unaware yeah. and you'll deal with it you'll deal with it when it happens what? and that's all that matters you'll, 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 it's like me in the room I don't until it happens I don't need to worry about it when it happens I'm sure to be able to do something well let, about let's it. think about this before we end here because one of the things is that you, you, you were quite worried about using some of the technology like the microphone and the camera uh, and, and to be honest so was I when I was at the stage that you were at because my mind was telling me that I wasn't capable of doing that you know and don't be stupid you can't do that but as soon as I started to act like a child and say well actually if I don't know how to use this what are the early steps I need to do so that I can start to master this and grow and once you get rid of all that craziness act as somebody that's dumb you can now start to learn and grow but until you get to that point you actually will always be dumb because you've never got the away from that kind of. Pro and I don't mean you. I mean me and everybody else. If they can't get well, rid I'm of that happy. idea, I'm happy that I want. I said this before. I want to grow, and the best way to grow is to be the dumbest person in the room, and not in the context of being stupid, but more you have the most to learn. Well, let's let's put that into context again. By learning to be dumb, it means that you know when to be quiet and to listen, and through listening, you will learn. I'm never going to be quiet. I'm never going to listen. I, they, people will tell me, we wish you were the dumbest person in the room. We wish you were dumb. But that's for another day. So don't be like Gavin, be like George. Bye for now. Absolutely. <laughs> dumb and dumber. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.